Hello, my name is Rachel Howard and I'm a graphic designer from Pensacola, Florida with a focus in publication design and illustration. In October of 2022, I was awarded a project grant from the Office of Undergraduate Research to create a collection of Rizzo printed zines focusing on traditional Irish fairy and folktales. Today, I will be going through the process of creating Tales from the Emerald Isle, a Rizzo printed zine collection. To provide some context for the project, the Office of Undergraduate Research, or OUR, is a department here at the University of West Florida that provides resources to students who apply for a grant. I applied for this project with John Doherty as my faculty mentor. The money was used to fund materials, such as ink for the Rizzo, paper for the cover and the interiors of the zines, and staples for the binding. In my application, I stated the goal, which was to pick four stories and produce 40 copies of each for a total of 160 zines. These were to be distributed to the public at the OUR Research Symposium and my senior exit show. The format of the zine perfectly combines illustration and publication design. The Rizzo allows for low-cost printing with environmentally friendly ink. A zine is a format that is easy to create and distribute to the local community. We have a Rizzo graph machine here on campus and I thought this project would be a great way to explore it. There are so many things to make zines about, so why Irish varying folktales? During the time I applied for this grant, I was also in the process of applying for Irish citizenship. I wanted to use this project as an opportunity to not only learn a little bit more about Ireland, but also share an aspect of Irish culture with the local Pensacola area. Fairy and folk tales were picked over Irish mythology because I believe they are a more accurate representation of modern day Ireland. Many of the fairy and folk tales are as old as Irish mythology, although they were not written down until the early 20th century. When they were published, the stories were changed to reflect the Christian influence of their Christian writers. Although Ireland has a very old, rich pagan belief system, nowadays it's majority Christian nation. Additionally, a lot of Celtic and Irish myths are very long. They feature reoccurring characters in these very long stories. Fairy and folk tales are generally a little bit shorter, which would fit better with the zine format. When picking fairy tales, I wanted each story to be picked thoughtfully. I received feedback when my grant was approved, suggesting to avoid tales that perpetuated negative stereotypes. After researching and talking to some relatives, I avoided stories that included alcoholism, domestic violence, or sly slash cunning main characters. There are many stereotypes about Irish people being alcoholics or deceitful, and I wanted to avoid including these in my zines. Since these were being distributed to the local area, I wanted them to be an accurate and respectful representation of Ireland and the Irish people. In the beginning of this project, my mentor forwarded me a video about fairy tales throughout the world. Many different cultures have the same stories with small cultural differences. I believe a great example of this is The Lady of Galeris. The story is very similar to Disney's The Little Mermaid, but features a marrow instead of a mermaid. A marrow is very similar to a mermaid, but it has a few key differences and it's unique to Irish fairy tales. The second story I picked was Demon Cat by Lady Wilde. Although short, I thought it was fun and exciting. The third tale that was picked was the Bunworth Banshee. Banshees are very old creatures. Um, they're actually based on Celtic women who would mourn and keen and wail at the graves the, of the deceased. There are many varying details of the specifics of what a banshee is. But many families, it's a source of pride, and some have used it as the crest throughout history. The last tale picked was The Enchanted Cave by Edmund Leamy. This story was fun and magical, and Leamy is not a particularly well-known author, so I thought this would be a great tale to include. Once the fairy tales were picked out, I began creating the layout of the zine. I followed the laws of page harmony and created a 9 by 9 grid in which I placed my text block and a decorative border. I thought that the zine just looked too boring with just text, since illustrations would not be on every page. I decided to use decorative borders that featured characters or symbols from the story. This was partially inspired by the Celtic knot and many of the decorations from the Book of Kells. Here is the process of creating the decorative borders for Lady of Galeris. In these first sketches, you see waves, fish, wedding rings, and this arch symbol. I will touch on this arch motif later on in the presentation. These original designs were too wide and did not leave much room for text. I sketched some more ideas to narrow them down. I decided to represent the two main characters, the Marrow and Dick Fitzgerald. Marrow, being the mermaid, has a border that features waves, fish, and a wedding ring. In this sketch, the rings circle her tail. 
Dick Fitzgerald is the man who finds her and steals her cap, trapping her on land. He is represented by the fishing pole, not only as a threat to the Marrow's freedom, but also because Marrow finds her cap near his fishing supplies. These were the two finalized sketches and then the finalized drawings. These are an example of how they looked on the page. Enchanted Cave was different from the other three zines. Due to its length, it features only one illustration. The three other zines ranged from 10 to 20 pages, including illustrations, but the Enchanted Cave with text alone was a little over 30. I decided to make up for the lack of illustrations by drawing five different decorative borders that changed throughout the story. Four of these borders represent four challenges that Kuglas, the main character, is presented with. All the decorative borders include smoke and stars, not only unifying them, but creating this subtle transformation between scenes and adding to this magical feel. For each story, there was an opening illustration and a small closing illustration. The goal of the opening illustration was to establish a scene or a character. The example to the right is from the Lady of Galeris. The opening illustration reflects the opening scene of the story, in which Dick Fitzgerald is smoking a pipe on the beach, thinking about how he needs to find a wife. The final illustration features a marrow's tail amongst the waves, as the marrow returns to the sea at the end of the story. For each zine, with the exception of the Enchanted Cave, my goal was to highlight major plot points with the illustrations. I, exper I experimented with how different mediums looked on the Rizzo. I really loved doing these fully shaded pencil drawings, however, when printed, it did not really have the same effect. Many of the details and lighter shades were lost. During this project, I used a software called Spectralite. This allows you to edit your image to get a desired effect when printing on the Rizzo. Despite editing, I just could not get that full range of values. It also has this sort of halftone effect, which I did not think was a good fit for this project. I next tried ink drawings. So the drawing on the far right is ink with a completely black background. This ended up putting too much ink on the paper, causing the Rizzo to jam quite frequently. Although the picture below is one copy that did not end up getting jammed, you can still see some fingerprints on the corners of where the ink smeared. In the end, I found that line drawings done with ink, as you saw on the previous slide, produced the same result but did not smear. When creating the illustration, I would sketch it in pencil, go over it with pen, and scan it into the computer. I would usually increase the brightness and contrast in Photoshop so that Spectralite would not pick up on the creases or shadows of the paper. Minor edits were sometimes made, including deleting a stray line or erasing a mistake. Once edited in Photoshop, I ran it through Spectralite to make sure it looked how I wanted. When everything looked good, I would print it out and scan it into the Rizzo. The drawings to your right compare the first sketch to the final ink drawing. You can see this process in more detail here and also how I refined the composition. I started with the pencil drawing on the far left. In the middle, it was meant to be the finalized ink drawing, but there are just too many mistakes. You can see that I wrote some notes down that I thought the cat looked weird because his nose seemed almost too human, and that the shadows in the doorway just didn't make sense. I fixed these problems when creating the final ink drawing. I didn't ha really have a plan when I sketched some ideas for the covers, so when I sent these off to my mentor, he encouraged me to create the covers to act as a set. You can see in the first draft that these two drawings don't really have any similarities. In order to unify the covers, I decided to implement an arch motif. I wanted it to represent the concept of when you open the zine up, you are transported to a completely different magical world. I also wanted to include elements from the decorative borders in order to unify the cover and the interior. You can see the evolution for the cover of Lady of Galeris. Although the second option has that strong arch shape, I redrew it because the pencil did not translate well. I decided to go for a drawing that better represented the story of the marrow transitioning between water to land and back to water. I moved that archway shape up to the top right corner. For the titles, I originally tried to mimic the Sianana's typeface. It has a Celtic feel and was developed to be used with Gaelic. However, I did not particularly like the look of it when it was combined with the illustration. Here's the evolution of the title text. I switched to a more fluid, organic hand lettering. The second option seemed too light, so I made the final iteration bolder. Combined with this offset color, it has a real striking effect. The first cover that we printed was Demon Cat. At the time, I planned for each cover to be white paper, a green color field, and black line work on top. 
However, the Rizzo that printed this green ink was a different Rizzo graph and it was older, so it slightly shifted that green color field each time. This made alignment a time-consuming process as each cover had a slightly different alignment. Sometimes the green ink was so far to the right it almost cut off a bit of the fish. Creating the Demon Cat covers was incredibly time-consuming. As a result of that, my mentor encouraged me to explore colored paper. The risograph I used for this project only had blue, pink, and black ink, but we wanted to see how blue ink would appear on different types of paper. As you can see to the right, there wasn't one piece of colored paper that was a strong example of this. Despite that, I really loved the idea of the cover using colored paper and began assigning each cover a colored paper and the inks that would go on it. Aligning was a lot smoother, and although we had a little bit of offset, it added to the charming Rizzo style. As mentioned before, I wanted to use this arch motif. I thought cutting the shape out of the cover would really strengthen this concept. My friend and fellow intern Katie let me her Cricut machine to achieve this effect. To create the cut path, I would use a light table and sketch where the cut would go. On the right, on the top right, you can see the title page and the cover, and below it, an example of the cutout on a test piece of paper. I used this to make sure the shape looked good and was in the proper position. On the bottom right, you can kind of see that the title is too far to the left. So I adjusted the cut path so it was shifted over a little bit to the left. So the title kind of had equal empty spaces on either side of it. To set up the file, I would scan the sketch in and create a shape in Illustrator. I would export that as a PNG and send it to the software. Here is an example of our first successful cut with Demon Cat. There were some issues with the Cricut machine. It would randomly shut down and it was a bit slow because you had to unload the mat every single time. So after Demon Cat, I switched to the Silhouette Cameo 2. The Silhouette made it a lot easier to align my cut path and was overall a lot faster and a lot more efficient. The zines were bound with a booklet stapler thanks to the help of my mentor and my friend and fellow intern, Colin. When applying for this grant, I stated that my goal was to have 40 copies for each of each for a total of 160 zines. In the end, we had a total of 200 zines, which was honestly really exciting that we surpassed that goal. Here are some pictures of the process. I also want to highlight this close-up of the Enchanted Cave. When printing the cover for Enchanted Cave, my mentor and I found this box of this really beautiful translucent paper. Although it was too thin for the Rizzo to print on, it made a great insert in between the cover and the title page. It slightly obscured the title, adding to the mystery of the Enchanted Cave. These zines were distributed at two events, the first of which being a research symposium hosted by the Office of Undergraduate Research. My mentor encouraged me to transform my setup from just a table into a sort of environmental installation that engages with passerbyers. Richard, one of my mentors from the tag team internship, helped print these vinyl banners that feature the four protagonists. I also had a large print of the title of this project, and examples of the Rizzo test prints on the side. You can't see it, but to the right, there is a description of the project for people to read. On my table, I had 20 copies of the zines and a folder with my original illustrations. I ran out of the zines pretty quickly, but I had a postcard for the synthesis exhibition, encouraging people to visit to pick up a copy of a zine. I was able to meet with students, faculty, and professionals from the University of West Florida, Pensacola State College, and local professionals. I got to meet a lot of people who are interested in mythology and a lot of people from different departments within UWF. A lot of people love the illustrations, especially the border decorations for the Enchanted Cave. Demon Cat was the most popular as it was the first to run out of zines, followed by the Enchanted Cave, the Bunworth Manchie, and finally the Lady of Galaris. Uh, featured is a picture of me and my mentor with my table set up. The next day was the opening reception for Synthesis. This is where the remaining copies were displayed for people to take home. And I saw a lot of people walking around that night with a full set of zines, which was really awesome to see. The popularity was similar to the OUR Symposium. Demon Cat ran out by the end of the night, and the Enchanted Cave ran out later that weekend. Here are some photos from the opening reception, people interacting with the display and the zines. So overall, I'm very proud of this project and the final result. I believe that the reception from the Synthesis and the Yo-Yo Symposium spoke to how much people were interested in the zines. Looking back on this project, there are a few things I would do differently. I would definitely manage my time better as towards the end it got quite stressful and there were a few late nights. Design-wise, I would change the illustrations on the cover of The Lady of Galaris and The Bunworth Banshee. I believe the covers for Demon Cat and The Enchanted Cave helped their popularity because they featured the main character in an exciting way. Demon Cat makes eye contact with the viewer as he eats his fish, and Kuglas, the protagonist from the Enchanted Cave, 
holds his sword to create a striking diagonal. Meanwhile, the illustrations for the cover of The Lady of Galeris and the Bunworth Banshee are a bit more vague. Looking back, I wish I included the faces or the full bodies of these characters. I believe it would have encouraged people to choose those stories. Not only would I have changed the illustration for the cover of the Bunworth Banshee, but I also would have changed the color of the cover. Green was also used in The Lady of Galeris, and in my opinion, it was used more successfully. I believe the pink just wasn't as vibrant on the green and would have looked better on a different color. Additionally, having another color would have helped distinguish the two zines from one another. Despite that, I am so happy to have had the chance to create this work. Speaking to people at the symposium and synthesis was a truly incredible experience. It was really awesome to see how many people wanted a copy, and I really hope that these zines inspire them to have a deeper appreciation for this aspect of Irish culture. Thank you so much for reading. If you would like to see more of my work, please check out my Behance at behance.net.